Hello and welcome. My name is Tyler Cobb here at Broadloom, and I am excited to talk to you today about a new update to RLM. It just keeps getting bigger and better. So what's going on with RLM? Well, as some of you may be aware, or maybe you're already using it, but we have expanded customer management to be available for all users and all companies. And why is this such a big deal? Well, let me tell you. So before RLM is really all about tracking and managing leads. So these are individual dis discrete uh, lead opportunities that come in and you manage them through your sales pipeline uh, from beginning to end and it takes them and then you're done. Uh, and then if they come back, they, you just bring them back into the fold and you go from beginning to end again and again. So now RLM is expanding to be for managing customers. And that's really exciting because it starts to evolve beyond just the individual lead. And it's about the total uh, experience of that particular customer with your business. So if we look ahead a little bit into the near future, RLM is really about nurturing relationships. And relationships are way more valuable than any individual lead. And that's really where the value of being able to capture this information and to keep that all in one place centralized that anyone can access, no matter if it's been a few weeks or a few years. And that's just really, really awesome. So I wanna spend some time today just going over kind of an overview of what the customer management module is in case some of you aren't super familiar with that one. And then just giving a live demo of how the companies and contacts and emails and restrictions, all that works together to give you a much better full view picture of your customers. So customer management is about being more than just a lead. So this isn't just a one-time touch point that they're having with your business. This is someone that's doing, uh, that's working with you or wants to work with you over a long period of time. So this could be mean it's a company or a builder or maybe designers that are bringing you repeat business, or perhaps it's just a loyal fan that loves your business and they're going to come back to you for every project that they have in their home or throughout their different buildings. So let's spend a minute kind of talking about how all this new structure works. So we still have the leads, which is the, the part that we're all loving, we're familiar with. So you have lead one, lead two, lead three, lead four. This used to be kind of where it stopped for RLM. Each one was treated unique and distinct. Now with the customer management module, you have these this next layer of contacts. And a contact is a unique email address for an individual and it can represent multiple leads over the lifetime of that particular contact. And then optionally, you could also have another entity above that called a company. So a company could be a builder, it could be, um, it could be a designer, it could be whatever you want that's a collection of either leads that go directly into that company or leads that are connected to vet various contacts within that company. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the app. So we're here normally where we are when we come into RLM, which is the open leads list page. Now what you'll find is this customer management option in the top right hand corner. This gives you access to the company's list and then contacts lists as well. Depending on your permissions, you may also see deleted companies and deleted contacts if those are of interest. So the first question is, how do we create new contacts? So there's a few different ways we can do that. The first way is if I create a new lead. So for example, if I create a sales lead, so this particular lead might be Hank Holiday. And his email address is hank.holiday at test.com. And you could complete the rest of this information as relevant. And when we create this lead, 
since he has a unique email address, if we go to details, if you can click on this first name or last name, this will take you to the contact record that was automatically created for this particular lead. So now we can see that Hank Holiday, this contact or customer record, has this lead associated to it. So alternatively, another way that we could create a contact is by going to this plus create button and directly creating the contact from here. So this might be John Doe with an H and his email is John Doe at test.com. So now we've created the contact and now we can create leads directly from this contact from here. So you can either start from the bottom up from a lead and then into, and that automatically creates the contact, or you could start from the contact and then automatically create leads from this contact. So I could create a sales lead, or if we have different pipelines, I could create leads for those specific pipelines from this contact, which is really nice if you have pipelines that go through different business flows, even though those are tied to that original contact, you don't have to keep duplicating that information throughout. The final way that we can create contacts is from a company record. So for example, if I'm in company, uh, we'll say ABC Builder, we have create a contact from a company. And so this will associate this contact. So for example, this may be Karen Designer. Um, and she's a designer, believe it or not. And it looks like Karen.designer at test. And so now I have a contact associated to this particular company, and we have all of that information here. It looks like we have, in this example, two companies named ABC Builder. So one of the things that may need to happen at some point while you're working with companies and contacts more often than before is you may need to merge them at some time because multiple contacts have been created that are duplicates so merging one into the other is very simple. You take the original one that you want to merge into a destination uh, record, and then you're going to merge with, so merging this will transfer this company's contacts, leads, tests, notes, files to the company you select below. So I'm gonna choose ABC Builder, which makes sense um, because it was a duplicate. And now I can merge them. And what's really nice about this is that now all of those notes and leads have been merged. And then this ABC Builder uh, merged because it was a duplicate is captured here just for the re historical record. And then all of the associated leads are here and associated contacts are here as well. So we have Karen, the designer, which is now here with this particular ABC Builder contact. And we have a single company record where before we had two. So we went through how we create new contacts. Now we want to talk a little bit more about creating these companies. So we saw one example of how we can associate that. We can create contacts from a company. Now we may want to come in here to create a company. And when we're creating a company, you can uh, X, Y, Z designs. And companies are unique by their zip code. So I can have lots of companies called ABC Flooring, uh, but ABC Flooring at zip code 123456 is different than um, ABC flooring at, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is seven, seven, zero, seven, zero. And this will be saved. 
And so this particular company is now a unique company and we can create leads directly from this company. We can create tasks from this company and these tasks are outside the scope of your standard lead tasks. Uh, but this allows you to do things like quarterly business reviews or keep track of um, touch points that you need to follow up on. Say, for example, you want to create a task every year um, to take another look at pricing that you have for that particular company or, you know, upload new materials or that kind of thing. We can... We've already went over how we can create contacts from this particular company. So this might be different, uh, build different designers that work with XYZ designs, or it might be uh, other employees that, that we might interface with them. And then if you want to attach files, so whether that be unique pricing or product brochures or, um, you know, PDFs of relevant information and terms and conditions, then all of that can be captured here at the company level. Finally, there's also a ability to restrict access. So restrict access is for system admins and business admins that they can restrict access for anyone below those particular roles and permissions. So to do this, I might restrict to Brittany and Chris and Broadloom Sales. And this will apply to any of the company's contact records as well. So now that's restricted. System admins and business admins can always access all companies and contacts, but anyone below that that's not on that list of restrictions then we'll not be able to access the details, contacts, and information for this particular com company. Even though this company will still show up in list, it won't be accessible for, for those individuals. So this might be a way that you can lock down certain relationships that are, uh, that are sensitive or have information that you want people to not get distracted with um, mixing between the two. So going back to the companies that we have, for example, ABC Builder, we had, we have all the notes that are available here and you can add additional notes just like you would at a lead level, but now you can do it at a company level and you can pin these notes. Uh, you can edit them and delete them same as you can on leads. Furthermore, you can go to leads and you have a list of all of the associated leads for this particular company. And this is the exact same as you would see on the contacts as well. So any leads associated to the company or the contact can be seen in this tab. You can click on any of these uh, and get to those. And you can also move and modify these columns just the same as you would as if you were on the list view. You can view any tasks that are associated for this particular company. Now, these are just tasks that are directly connected to the company, not tasks associated to leads that are relevant for that particular company, because all of those are captured uh, at the lead level. Finally, you can review contacts and files that are specific to this particular company. Again, any files associated to leads uh, specifically, don't follow up under here, but any unique ones for the company will be here. So you can attach files either by clicking on the attach files icon here, or you can go to attach files in the quick links up on the top of the page. Something that we may find ourselves wanting to do is to link and unlink leads from specific contacts or companies. So let's first start with unlinking and then we'll try linking it to someone else. So let's select Tim Henderson here. He's currently associated to a contact of Tim Henderson. We're going to edit his information 
and he does he's not associated to a unique email address so we're going to break this by clicking this uh, minus sign and it's going to prompt you with uh, are you sure you want to unlink tim from this lead yes and i'm going to associate it to There's actually a Tim test. That's the correct one that I wanted to link it to. So now it filled in that information that I was looking for. And I'm going to click Save. So now if I go to Details and I can click on Tim test, and I can see now that we have these two particular leads that are both associated to this contact. So similarly, we can go to companies and we may find that we need to change which companies that a particular lead is associated to. So the way we'll do that is we'll come up here to, uh, for example, this particular lead. We will edit info and we can, again, click this icon here next to company name. Are you sure you want to unlink ABC Builder from this lead? Yes. And now I can associate it to XYZ Designs save and now i've reassigned this lead to the other company of xyz designs and all of that's captured here as well similarly to how the email address works for uh, leads contacts and companies have the same thing so by clicking on this icon here it says copy rlm internal email address you copy this and you add it to the CC line of any email that you send to that particular contact, and it will record that information here in the notes section. So that way you have a historical record of all email correspondence with that individual. As long as they reply to all and they send that email back to you with that CC line of this unique address, then that will still populate. And this is what it looks like. And here in the front, it says contact. That's just letting the system know that this is appended to the contact record for this individual. And if for some reason the person, the individual just hits reply, one of the easiest things to do is just forward that email to uh, that particular address. So just forward and then send it to this and it'll populate here where you expect it to. So much like you're familiar with looking at the leads list view, you now have companies list view, which is uh, very similar to leads, but in that it's a list of all of your companies so you can move you can move fields around, you can sort ascending and descending. You can also, for example, pin columns to the left or to the right of the screen. So that way, if you scroll horizontally, they stay visible where you need them. This can be helpful as you're working through big sets of uh, lots of different columns. Finally, if you need to export any of the information, you can click this export button and it'll send you an email with that information. You can then find those either in the email or you can at any time you can go to your account, go to files, and this is a list of all of the files that you've exported in RLM. So whether it's leads, contacts, companies, or otherwise. Similarly, we have the contacts list as well. Again, you can find all of the information here on the contacts. 
You can edit columns, drag and drop these as needed, turn them on and off, and then even save different views of this information that fits your particular needs. Well, that concludes our live demo portion of the RLM customer management features that we've introduced. And just to recap, this really is about mastering your sales and just unlocking that customer lifetime value. We understand that this is, is a step in that direction, but it's a big step for your company. So if you're not already doing this or you're not bringing it into the digital uh, documentation of your company and just standardizing it, then this is really what will get you to take that step. And so just as a quick recap, the companies and contact features that we've now rolled out for all companies in, uh, in all customers that use RLM is really about improving the communication of your employees and just the organization. And it goes beyond just leads, uh, but then expands to these, these individuals and these relationships that they have with you and individuals being, you know, the, the person that comes in off the street and then just is a continuous customer with you for their life, or it might be a company that just really loves and, and enjoys working with you year after year. And that then those features allow you to track those prospects and those clients and just handle everything from files and important documents that are related to them uh, to just tracking notes and such that transitions between one sales rep to another is just seamless for their entire experience. Uh, and ultimately, this is all to just nurture and grow the lifetime value of your customers, which is good for them, good for you, and a great part of the business in working with Broadland. So at this point, thank you for your time. Uh, as always, please use reach out to us, support at broadloom.com for any help or additional information. Uh, at this point, I'd love to open it up for Q&A uh, with respect to customer management features for RLM. All right. Any questions? I see Debbie had one. We would be great if incoming FSU leads, uh, when auto created an RLM, were brought in with some way to filter them, uh, just making it easier to contact and follow up. Yeah, Debbie, great point. Uh, love the, this question. So we have been working in the background for probably about two to three months, uh, doing a massive overhaul and upgrade to our entire database. And as part of that project, uh, we've gone through uh, the big, the big tough part was making all these micro decisions about new standard fields and what that looks like uh, for RLM going forward. Because with standardized fields, that allows us to do a lot more uh, when it comes to reporting standard standards, um, which feeds like future projects and that kind of stuff. So, uh, all that to be said, FSU field and making that as part of a, a part of our standard schema is absolutely on the table. Um, I would expect that to be available probably within the next one to two months. Um, try, I'm trying to say that conservatively, so hopefully sooner than that, but um, essentially you will be able to start seeing that kind of data coming through. Um, and we'll, we'll have a new field for us. That way it's, it's clear that, oh, this one's from uh, this particular brand or this one's from Proximity Mills or et cetera. So yeah. Really excited, coming soon. Okay, uh, next question, I think maybe from, yeah, what can we look forward to next for RLM? So yeah, that ties in a little bit with uh, Debbie's question, you know, the, the big database overhaul, not only unlocks some new uh, standard fields that will, in, in other models that can help us to better track. So for example, sample orders, uh, to bring in more structured data into those. So it's not a lot of that being appended to the notes that you see today, uh, but also making uh, RLM just more customizable. Uh, what we'd love to do is basically make it more customer facing to where you as a system admin or as a business owner can add custom fields. You can tweak how which fields are displayed on what stages. 
Um, and it just adjusts your workflows and your sales process kind of on your own without having to, um, you know, constantly call your account manager or ask support. Those are still viable options. You're welcome to, to contact us anytime. But we want you to, to kind of have those powers. Um, furthermore, a few other things that are coming up. And when I say coming up, I mean in the next like six months. So these are things that we're all actively in development. Uh, we have, we're expanding our API suite right now. You can use it to create leads, um, only. So imagine that you have a full suite of, of, uh, ways to get data on your leads, to send that data to other third-party systems that you may have, um, and to update records and, and that kind of stuff. So that's super exciting coming very soon. Uh, calculated fields will be unlocked as part of this database uh, update. And what that really will look like in the immediate future is being able to aggregate some of these uh, like sales amounts and quote amounts and such for uh, the contacts and companies. And then have other ways to you know look at maybe calculating, say, margin might be a good example that you have oh, this was our cost field, you have um, a sales amount field, and you can look at the delta. Uh, and then finally, lead reporting has been uh, the uh, hot topic for RLM for the last uh, couple of years that I've been managing. It. And with this, this new update, standardizing the fields, this then becomes very much a reality of something that we can more easily bring to uh, bring to all of you. So having some standardized sales uh, reporting and, and lead reporting and such is is something that we know you you all desperately uh, want and and would love and we're, we're gonna make that a reality. So uh, that's probably the the there's a, maybe little things that we'll sprinkle in there as as customers need it, but those are the the driving factors that we're looking forward to in the near future. So, uh all right next question if we have it what learning resources are available yeah great question uh so there's a couple different resources available one in in rlm in the top right hand corner there should be a help uh it might be buried underneath uh account and then help i forgive me i can't remember now um but then that'll take you to a dedicated page full of uh, content and those are how-to articles as well as videos. Uh, all the videos are currently being updated. I know they're a little old on the branding side, but um, functionally they should all be uh, working. And then the ones that aren't, you know, all of those are being updated over the next month or two. Then we also have a learning module system, uh, LMS. So that is basically allows you to kind of take a guided tour through the app and it'll ask you quizzes and those types of things. That's really great and highly recommended for anyone coming new on board for your team to, to use. Uh, if you want that link to that particular content and to be added to it, uh, just reach out to support at broadlim.com or your account manager and they can hook you up with that. So, all right. And that's, I think that's all the questions we have so far. But again, if anything comes up, uh, please reach out to us. We're always happy to, to help. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you soon.